Welcome back to Ride and Glide. Today we're going to be reviewing King Song's latest EUC to the market. It's the KS20, and that's also known as the Eagle. It's a huge off-road wheel, and we're going to be putting it to the test out on the trails, and we're also going to take a deep dive in here. Now, as you can see, I'm not on my own today. We've got Roger Chapman with us, who is our technician here, and also our team rider who rides EUCs, absolutely obsessed with them, and he's going to give you all of the information you need to know on this latest model from King Song. So as you can see, we've got the wheel here. Um, it's a bit smaller than a scooter or a bike, so we can actually get us and the wheel in frame, which is handy. You can see from uh, our point of view, or from your point of view, it's got a huge off-road tire on it. KS20, supposedly, the 20 stands for the wheel size with the KS18 before. We just stood for an 18 inch. This would be a 20 inch, but I'll give it to Roger just to explain that a bit more, because it's not exactly 20 inch, is it? Um, it's not exactly 20 inch. Uh, how do Europeans and the Chinese and the US, how they do their measurements, it's all different. So on the tyre it says 14 by 2.75. 14 by 2.75? Yeah, on the tyre. Right. But the actual rim diameter is 18 inch. 18? So where's 18. the 20 coming from? I think it's their maths that come from the rolling radius, the actual radius of so the tyre. So in China itself. that's how they'll be measuring it? I so believe that, so. It's, um, that's where it gets its name from, the KS20 then? Yeah. The rolling radius. So what does rolling radius mean? Rolling radius is the outside, the actual true diameter, diameter of the tyre. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So that sounds fairly complicated when you're talking about tyre sizes, but it does make sense when you when Roger explains, obviously, the rolling radius is 20, which is where it gets its name. So I presume, what, in the KS18, that would have been a rolling radius of 18? It is an 18-inch. Right, okay. Right, we're getting wheel. it. So it's a bit complicated. <laughs> I can hear that. Um, within the tyre, there's obviously the rim and then the motor. Now... What King Song have done here with the S20 or KS20 is put a 3,300 watt motor in. That gives off over 7,000 watts of peak power. So incredibly powerful wheel this is going to be, which is what they tried to design. They, when they were building this, were looking to make an off-road mountain bike inspired wheel. And from the big chunky off-road tire, you can see that. But also, like we've just said, that huge amount of power in the motor is gonna be great for getting you up and down those hills. Now I'm gonna leave it to Roger just to explain a little bit more how that power is gonna be delivered uh, or how King Song have designed the wheel for that power to be delivered. Right, well, first and foremost, if it's an off-road wheel, it needs to have really good control over the torque curve. Right. Because the torque curve translates into traction. And when you're off-road on rolling pebbles, stone, mud, you need really good control over that torque curve and that's so critical. Well, otherwise it's just spinning up. You mean, yeah, not? there's no point having crazy amounts of power if you can't put it into the dirt. It's just going to spin. So, you know, the, the times you need a wheel to wheel spin, huh, to get you out of trouble. Right. There's times you really need to be delicate. Just final toe pressure movements. Okay. Little torque. So can you not put the full torque of the of the motor in immediately if you wanted to pull away? Is that what you're saying no, about no, torque? You can't, it it no. decides how it puts that down. It's preset. Yeah, I mean, it's 126 volts, 3,300 watt motor, 7,500 peak yeah. power. But that's no good if you haven't got a really smooth torque curve, especially from standstill to the initial pulling away. Right. So trail riding, technical trail riding, a lot of it's real low speed. You know, you've got roots, you've got rock. You're doing three mile an hour, you could do 12 mile an hour. But it's all real slow speed, delicate movements. Well, you don't want that wheel just... You don't want, no, you don't want it to be like trigger happy. Right. You know, you don't want it to be like a switch just on and off. Yeah. It needs to be really, really smooth. A linear power curve on your first part of the power curve and then more exponential as you right. go up the so power as you're curve. increasing the speed or whatever. And you've got momentum yeah. and then you need the high free wheel speed and okay. you still need the torque to keep pushing into the wind and picking up the speed. Right, okay, but okay. But the low down torque curve, the first... So two stages of the torque curve, it's really critical for trail so riding. So King Song have designed it in that way? Yeah, they've got a lot of power out of the batteries. 
yeah. which goes to the MOSFETs, which then goes into the wheel and translates into, into traction. They don't just develop a, a power curve, a torque curve, just for the, quality, uh, for the controlled ride. Right. Okay? For the traction. Yeah. It's, they have to control the power spike, the power oh, right. to the MOSFETs. All oh, right, to stop blowing the controllers, basically. Yeah, you don't yeah. just go 100%, there you yeah. go. And if you did give it 100%, what are you going to gain from that? Okay. Okay. Okay, I get it. So they've it's, thought about that and how that could be delivered yeah, in the so best way. It's controlled, obviously, it comes from the MOSFETs, but it's for software. Okay. You know? So and it's by design. It's by design. I mean, you've got a real large wheel. Yeah. So it's got a real fast rolling speed. Yeah. So a small wheel, it's really twitchy, it's really unstable, really dynamic, but a small wheel inherently has its torque because it's got a small rolling radius. Okay. This is a big wheel. This is getting technical, so isn't it? A big wheel is not going to have the fast initial acceleration like a small wheel. Yeah, I understand that. Like when the pint beats the XR in acceleration exactly. and then the XR takes That's over. That's right. Yeah, I get um, that. So, by okay. design, this is inherently going to be fast over general off-road terrain yeah. because of the size of the wheel. But controllable. Totally controllable, yeah. So, now, so we talked about torque. What about with that motor? You've told me before, when you're jumping, things like that, you need a high free wheel speed. Yeah. So, you need speed, you need momentum. Yeah. So, what, and why is that? Well, you need the speed so you can cover the, cle the, um, cover the clearance, uh, yeah. get the height cover the distance. Right, but why do you need the wheel to spin fast as you're in the air? Well, all the time you're going along the ground, yeah. the tyres in contact with the train, and it's perfectly fine. But once you come away from the ground, the gyro is working really, really hard, trying to keep that dead centre of effort. Right. Okay, so as you take off, your trajectory and your attitude through the air is critical because as soon as you lean forward slightly, you change the attitude of the wheel. Right. Say, say you lean forward slightly, you pitch forward too much, the wheel's going to spin and it's going to spin real fast because there's no resistance there. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. It's just literally free spin. Like, it, yes. Yeah, so under no load. Yeah. What you have with that, once you're in the air, you'll have torque of the wheel versus yeah. the counter torque of the chassis. Right. So when the wheel spins forward fast, yeah. The chassis is going to Wants counter to talk because there's nothing to stop it. Yeah. Okay, so that changes your attitude. So you're going through the air. Right. You lean so forward. forward and back. Okay, yeah. it pitches, the wheel spins real fast forward. Yeah. And the chassis won't do the opposite because it's not fixed to anything. Understand. And that makes it quite interesting when you jump in. Okay. You need to keep your centre of balance, you know, here. So, so, but why does that wheel speed need to keep high? For jumping, you need a high free wheel yeah. speed. So, so it gives you a greater margin for error, and you don't want to get the wheel cutting off, basically. Right, so if it spins or, or too fast on certain wheels, it will It, it can will cut. cut off. Right. I mean, it's not an everyday occasion. You're talking about the extremes, yeah. you know? But that's what this wheel's for, isn't it? It's, it's what for it's for. It's, it's, sort of more it's, advanced riders, you say. It's not beginner's wheel. It's an intermediate to advanced. Right, okay, so people I mean, who may be jumping. Sure, you could learn on it. Your learning curve would be much longer if you bought something smaller and got your basic skills together, but it's an intermediate to advanced wheel. All right, so let's move on from there because you could talk yeah. about that all day. Yeah. Let's talk about the battery. So you've said it's 126 volt. Um, that's quite big. <laughs> that sounds that's, quite big when we're dealing with scooters it, and things like that. It sounds was, a huge battery. Yeah, it was before this interview the biggest battery power output to date. Right, okay. Obviously, we've got other manufacturers that are trying to take present over that. Yeah. And, you know, is that going to convert to range? Is that going to mean it's going to have a huge range or is that just more power that the Bigger controllers battery, can draw? Bigger battery, more torque. More yeah. power, more range. Right, okay. So yeah. let's just, let me just check on my sheet here. There, Kingsong are claiming this can get up to 125 miles of range. I presume that's not riding off road. Yeah. I presume that's probably yeah, that's 10, it. That's 12 right. mile an hour on a smooth. Yeah, it's when they put these figures in, there's so many factors involved. I mean, the off road tyre is going to reduce that. Yeah. The temperature is going to reduce that. Yeah. The total body weight and the wheel is going to reduce that. Yeah. Um, the great thing, another thing about this, even though it's a downhill mountain bike inspired design, yeah. it's got a lot of qualities there which you want on a road EUC. Like? Big power, yeah. high top end speed, yeah. large rolling radius wheel. Yeah, so, a cru so for cruising as well. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it from two points of view, you look at it now with an off-road tyre, motor motocross inspired, downhill mountain bike inspired, you yeah. put a slick tire on that, it becomes a super moto. Yeah, I see what you design. mean. Yeah, I see what you, you mean. You know? It's not not everyone's gonna want suspension. Yeah. 
Can, but, I, can I get just mentioning suspension? Yeah. Obviously, this has a huge shock on it compared to it is. Well, any other, even the KS18. It's got yeah. a much bigger shock. So can yeah. you talk a little bit about that and why they might have done that and how they've had to incorporate that into the design of, the, of this wheel? So the S18 was arguably the best, I'll say it wasn't arguably, it was the best full suspension EUC on the market, yeah. bar none. Um, there were a few criticisms that the quality of the suspension, it wasn't plush, it didn't have much travel. So for trail riding, great little little um, logs and little ramps and little yeah. drop-offs, that's fine. But once you start doing big hits at high speeds, it would run out of legs. It right, would, okay. It would, it, would, um, it would bottom out and it would top out. Yeah. And then it's all down to you and your legs to control right. that. Have they addressed that with this? They have addressed it um, way and beyond okay. from that point of view. So yeah. I've read from the specs that this is 130 mil travel on this suspension. That sounds like a long That's right, yeah. travel. That's right, yeah. For such a small wheel, you know, effect a small wheel. Yeah. I mean, you've got two things. I mean, you've got the, the actual size of the shock absorber. Yeah. Okay. And the distance in which it travels within that stroke. Yeah. But what that translates to through the suspension, through the rocker arms, is the actual distance travelled from the wheel. I see what you mean. So this whole bit here is moving from, down towards the wheel and then back up. So where what, your feet yeah. would be going down as the suspension is yeah. put under pressure. Yeah. yeah, I see what you mean. The, the, you know, so you need a huge clearance here, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you've got a small clearance on the shock, Yeah. but through the design, they've managed to do the different points of leverage and adjustments to make it a long stroke here. Right, okay. That really does change a lot of things because you don't want a real short stroke shock and a high okay. travel here because right. it won't be plush. Okay. If you've got a long stroke shock absorber, it has a quality throughout that stroke. Okay. And it performs all the way through that stroke. Right. And it's really important on, on, on air shocks as well as it is on coil. So, but the distance it can travel from the wheel to the top of the chassis, yeah. and how you get that. So that's the 130 mil, is it? That's that 130 mil. So it's that travel yeah, from chassis never, to Yeah, we never relate to the actual shock absorber. Oh, okay, you've right. Got, you've that's got your dimensions you need if you want to upgrade your shocks and stuff, yeah. but all it boils down to is what do you need on the travel suspension? Okay. And if you've got 130 mil, that's, that's plenty. Of okay, money. so speaking about the shock, it's what, rebound adjustable, you could say? It's got rebound, it's got preload, it's, a, it's coil sprung. Sag? Yeah, you set the sag via the actual core spring. It's got a castle nut on the top. Ah, okay. You rotate that to set your sag height. All right, separately to your rebound and Yes, all that. Yeah. yeah. You always, you wind those both out to zero. You zero those dials out. Yeah. Okay, so you don't want them to interfere with the sag height. So you set your sag first. Yeah. We wind do your, on mountain bikes and everything out. else we do. Wind yeah. the dials out so it's nice and loose. There's no preload. There's no damping. Okay. You want, on average of any shock, I would say 15% on average, give or take, okay. of the actual travel from the shock absorber. Right, okay. So every ride has a different sag height, but it's always relatively the same distance on the shock. And that's adjustable on the S20? It's adjustable. Brilliant. Yeah. So, I mean, you talked about some pretty good features already. Now, from my point of view, looking at EUCs, I, I ride them a bit, I don't ride them most. This looks yep. like quite a high wheel. Feels like you're quite high up on it. Obviously, you've talked about the clearance needs to be high, so that makes yeah. it high. But does that make it top heavy? You know, because I've, I've always found it easier on those low wheels, you're near the ground. They are inherently stable. See, I'm a basic rider, but... You, you've got a small wheel. Inherently stable, do you Inherently say? stable. Right, okay. So they are designed to be stable. Is yeah. What I mean. At low speed as well as high speed, you've got a small wheel, you've got a low axle height. Oh, I see what you mean. So you kind of ride, they ride themselves, kind of They're thing. Almost self stabilized with a little bit of gyroscopic effect. Yeah. They can almost stand up. So why would having a high centre of gravity be useful to anyone? We don't actually want a high centre of gravity. Okay. We always want that inherent stability yeah. to come from a low centre of gravity. Right. But if it's too stable, you lose your feedback and the authority. Right. Oh, so the control. Okay, so you could look at it two different ways. It's really stable, it's inherently stable at low speed and high speed, but it doesn't give you agility. Okay. You don't get the feedback. Right, so you're talking for higher end technical riders, people that want to be in control of the wheel themselves. Yeah. You're going to have more, it's obviously going to be harder to learn on. That's what you were talking about earlier, wasn't it? It's not, a, it's not a beginner's wheel necessarily. It's not, no. So. I mean, look at mountain biking. Um, you can ride some mountain bikes, both in the same category, both downhill bikes. Mm -hmm. You ride one, you just pedal, you push, and you go down the hill and it roll over anything. Okay? It's inherently stable. 
they roll over anything, you're getting performance. You're not necessarily earning that performance. Right. Okay, the bike's I'm giving that to you through design. Yeah. But you've got the other type of rider that wants to have control over all of those aspects. Okay, over its roll axis and how slack it is on the steering. And you earn it, but you also feel it. Okay. So, and it's another main, main thing. Is so it's harder to it's harder to ride, but you can get but you can get more from it. Yes, it's tall. The centre of, of weight is relatively high because of the batteries. You've yeah. got a high foot plate. Right. High centre from yeah. the axle to the ground. Yeah, because the wheel's bigger. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a tall tall wheel. Yeah. So it's inherently unstable by design right. from that point of view. Yeah. But if you've got a heavy, tall wheel, how do you control that? Well, through your input, whether it's via pressure on the pedals, pushing left foot or the right, that controls the roll. But foot pressure alone won't just do that. You don't have enough authority. Right. You've got your foot, you've got your ankle, you've got the inside of your leg. Yeah. Okay. So. You've got two types of riders, one like low wheels, they control all by the ankles and their feet, and yeah. then you've got those with the, with the tall wheels like the S18 and the V11. Yeah. We use a lot more the inside of our leg, Okay. up to our knee. So that's quite a long lever then, isn't it? This I gives suppose. us leverage. Right, I see what you mean. I see leverage, what you mean. Yeah. okay. Basic riding, people tuck in tight to the chassis, they stabilise it with the inside leg, and they just use... So for pressure. slow technical riding, slow like routes, things like that, you're going to have quite a lot, well, if you're a good rider, you're going to be able to control that. You want that. to control the whole chassis. Yeah, I understand. You can shift your leg further forward. Right. And push to the right. The wheel will bank and it will roll at the same time. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I look at it and I think it's big, it's heavy, but that's going to help you go over terrain. It's yeah. going to help you keep momentum. It's definitely going to help you on downhill inspired trails. Yeah. But what about the speed? So say you're on a flat ground, you've gone off the trails. Yeah. You're on a hard flat ground. Yeah. Is that going to be stable? Hard flat, like, like a single trail. It will just seem or even, a, a, like a yeah, know, tarmac. It will be stable once you get up to an optimum riding speed. Because then it's going to be, because you're, you're saying the centre so of gravity is higher, it's going to be... It's inherently top heavy. Yeah. And it's inherently unstable and it wants to roll. Yeah. Okay, drop to the side. Yeah. So anything at a low speed, the gyro effect and the gyroscopic effect is going to be low. Yeah. So at low speed, it's going to be inherently unstable. Understand, yeah. But, as soon as you but that allows speed, you to manoeuvre it. That's right. Yeah. So technical trail riding is not fast. Right. But you once know, you pick up speed, it becomes riding, more stable. Because the gyroscopic effect comes in okay. and you've got a large rolling radius wheel, a yeah. big heavy wheel and motor. Yeah. So a stronger gyroscopic effect you're going to get back. Okay. So the more speed, the more inherent stability you get from the wheel. Right, okay. Not from the chassis. Okay. I'm getting it. So All it's, right. yeah. It just sounds to me like it's, it's, it's quite advanced. It sounds like quite an advanced wheel to me. This subject, it's, 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 it's just, it goes on and on. It never ever ends, eh? Because okay. you're only on one wheel, and they yeah. say less is more. Yeah. But it's so complex, and there's so many factors involved. It sounds it. It sounds it's, it. I've never gone, I've never heard this much about EUCs before, um, you know, and we sell them here. So yeah. it's really good to get the insight of someone who, who sort of lives it and actually understands the science behind it and maybe why or how the manufacturers are making them and why. Um, so this will, I know you've been really excited about riding it because yeah, yeah. obviously we haven't taken it out yet, but from what you're saying, this is going to suit your type of riding. Without a doubt, yeah. I like a tall, tall wheel. Yeah. And I like to have real tall sides so I've got real control over so the leverage. So going back to the wheel, yeah. obviously it comes with pads, yeah. um, you know, you'll probably end up putting your own on as I'll you do, on, yeah. but we've got these, what I've noticed is these big foot plates and they've got grip on them, you know, with yeah. the knobble sticking up. That is that an addition yeah, from studied. what they've done before? They've always used grip tape. Yeah, oh, so they've used grip tape before. Always, yeah. Right. This is the first incarnation of studded pedals. Right. That reminds me of smashing Pop shins production. on motorbike, uh, on a um, mountain bikes and things like that, so. Yeah, you don't really get that with this. I mean, on EUCs, when you have a crash, if it catches you up again, yeah, it's usually the side of the front. Oh, right, okay, it doesn't sound or much maybe, better, Or maybe honest, the front, you know. Yeah. Okay, so big, wide pads. So they're, everything about this, they, it looks strong, it looks sturdy, it's it looks tall powerful. And it's wide. Yeah, it looks big. Yeah, it's huge. Um, what weight have we got here? Let's have a look down on the spec sheet. So it's coming it's in about- 34. 
Is yeah, it 34? I've got I've got 28 written here, but that might be without the batteries. That might yeah. Um, I think it's around about 34. We need to, okay. we can so that's quite a heavy wheel. I mean, you're not particularly yeah. moving it around. Obviously, it's got the handle that pulls up. Has it? Can yeah, you show us yeah, that? Yeah, at the front. Just well, this here. is this is pre-production model. Remember, that's it. So the plastics used on this model are going to be higher quality once they put it into mass production, and it probably won't squeak like that. That's right. I mean, so you can't this, expect that. This gives you the prototype. this gives you the general look, as I said, pre-production. But they've yeah. used pre-production plastics, so it will be a higher quality once it comes out. Um, so it's app enabled, as they always are. So is that the same yeah. as the S18 or KS18? App? It's the same app. Yeah. We got lights here. Do they control the lights? You know. Yeah, so still, still controls the lights. So these are headlights, we're at the front here. Yeah, they're fully adjustable. Oh, okay, so you can set the pitch. You can of... change the beam angle, Yeah. whether well, that's it's high useful. or low or wide or narrow. Yeah. It's going fast. But you generally ride with a headlamp as well, don't I you? I use both, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm scanning the terrain with the light, headlight, this one just right. keeps you online. And rear lights, we've got rear lights there as well. We've got rear lights, yeah. Yeah, yeah so... nice big one around, around the cooling fins, it looks really nice. Okay, we'll take a look at that with the camera. And we've also got a handle at the back, we can see there a seat up on the yeah. top, so you can sit down if you want, yeah. if you know how to ride sitting down. I mean, yeah. that sounds which even is, harder to me. Which would be relatively easy, because it's a tall wheel as well. That's it. it sounds hard to me. Guys now. have what, small... You have to, so yeah. you don't have to sit down so far. Well, guys have got small EUCs and put a wheel yeah. on it, you yeah. know? I see Half the guys can't get down there. Yeah, I see what you mean. You know, yeah, it's, you're squatting. Yeah. One thing I really like about it, and we'll get the camera around to the back, is the stand. This comes with an inbuilt stand, as some other wheels have, but this stand seems really practical, the way that yeah, it works. it's really convenient. Um, and it sort of it sort of fits into the fender as well, doesn't it? It's like a one-piece Yeah, it supports item. the fender. But it's not right. going to get in the way when you're actually riding. No, there's been some chat about whether or not when you do little um, drop-offs on going over logs and route, that it it's going to catch. catch. I mean, if you're going really, really slow and you're crawling along and you do little drops, a chance you could catch it. It looks pretty high up to me. Time will tell. It's pretty high up, yeah. I think I think it would be fine, but okay. time will tell. Well, we're going to see soon. Let's just go have a big recap. So we've got this huge 20-inch rolling radius wheel, off-road wheel. What's that by three? That looks about three inches. 2.75. 2.75. Yeah. We've got the huge 3,300 watt motor, over 7,500 peak power watts, which sounds crazy. 126 volt battery. It's a monster. Um, that yeah. is a monster. Apparently giving over, well, up to 125 miles of range, um, which is insane. We've got the lights, we've got the huge foot, pad, uh, foot pegs, we've got the um, shin knee pads that come all, with all it. The power pads. you in, power yeah. pads. Um, and apart from that, as you can see, well, hold on, I haven't even mentioned the shock. The yeah. huge shock on it, adjustable shock, uh, with 130 mil travel, which we've learned is between the chassis and the uh, wheel, so that's the gap between the chassis and the top of the wheel that allows it to go up and down 130 mil. And I mean, there's not much more to say, Rods, is there? Apart not from let's get stage. it out there and you need to get it out on the on the trails, yeah. So the next clip you're going to be you're going to be seeing is probably of this guy either maybe killing himself or having a really good time. So we'll see you out there. So welcome back. We've come in from testing out the S20. Well, I say we, Roger's back from testing out the S20. I didn't go anywhere near it. They were out in 40 mile plus winds, straight after a storm, debris everywhere, really, really extreme conditions. So we put the S20 through its paces um, in probably some of the harshest conditions that, that you could find. Um, and you can see how it went. We're gonna to talk to Roger now about how the feel of the ride was when he was riding it, get a bit of feedback from him. Uh, so, Roger, I put it to you, from start to finish, as soon as you got on the wheel, uh, obviously you, you'd bigged it up a lot beforehand, or in your mind you thought it was going to do, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. ride a certain way. Yeah. So, uh, tell us about the ride that you had on it, and maybe how far you went, and what sort of terrain you were going across at the oh, time. Okay, well, to begin with, I looked at this and just saw a bigger S18, and in many ways it is. It's got the high heat sink on top, which is heavy, with the huge suspension hanging over the back which is overslung. So it's got so much in common with the S18, but that's where the similarities end. Right. The huge great tire and the massive rim and the gigantic motor 
gives a really strong gyroscopic effect. Yeah. It's not overpowering, but it really does lend itself well to making this wheel so stable. So it was stable when you what even off road. Totally the opposite to what I was thinking. Okay. I'm thinking tall wheel, really wide, yeah. really heavy. Tilting not, here and there. It's not going to be the S20 Eagle. This is going to yeah. be a turkey. <laughs> but it was far from it. It was so planted, really, really stable. You're not having to fast twitch muscles and micro adjustments, right. you know, and scan and navigate the terrain. You just choose your line, stay committed, <laughs> commit to it, maintain the speed, when and it just, it just plows, through. plows through everything. Really. I mean, from the get-go, it took a few minutes. Yes, it feels a little top-heavy to begin with. The CRG is a little bit further back. So the swing weight is real light, but it's filtered down so well, and the balance is so perfect. It couldn't have been better. So it's, Considering conditions, it couldn't have been a better experience. Okay, well, I mean, that's amazing. Just to give some context, they went up to the red and black mountain bike runs, one of the highest hills around here. Um, no mountain bikers were out that day. That's how bad the conditions were. So, um, I mean, it must have been quite testing. It wasn't about, it wasn't about performance. It's more about survival at times, you know. <laughs> but this wheel, it really shined in those conditions. Okay. I generally would not consider going out in 40 plus mile an hour winds. Just for a laugh. It wasn't mud. What we have here where I ride, it's flint and chalk. And a lot of the areas have got mud, but when it's flint and chalk and then it's all bogged down, it's really, really challenging. You, you struggle to walk in these conditions, but the gyro and the tire, they all stood up really well. The suspension, it's not plush like the S18 on the bottom half of the stroke. Okay. People think you've got a big suspension, great, it's gonna be really smooth throughout the whole travel. That's not always the case. It's a hard hitter. It's okay. for big jumps, big ruts, big drops. Okay. It doesn't really take effect till you start to really hit some square edges or you start jumping and then it really comes into its own. Right, but okay. the first part of the stroke, it's not plush, it's relatively firm, which is not a downside, it gives you good feedback. And with the huge great tyre, if you really want to make it a little plusher, yeah. you can just drop the PSI a few. Okay, a bit easier on the knees. A few dials, and then the tyre, you know, it really gives, Yeah. Conditioning, um, considering the conditions allow. But so performance-wise, this was, very, very high up there with the wheels you've ridden, performance-wise? I can only compare it to the S18 in a sense. It's the only wheel which is so similar to this one okay. by design. Yeah. The S18, it's sweet spots on the handling. Because that's been your favourite wheel for quite a long time, without, isn't it? Without a doubt, yeah. Yeah. And that's it. the sweet spot on the, on the S18, it's 16 to 22 mile an hour. Yeah. The sweet spot on this is like 15 to 35. Right, okay. So the margin for error yeah. and that extra power in reserve, yeah. it's all there. Okay. You are so comfortable. This thing's it's a fast roller. So what's the, everyone? So what's the top speed you got on it in these type of conditions off roading? I think around about 32, 35. So that's quite quick when you're it, going for a. If if you were to ride long and you sneeze, you're yeah. touching 35 miles an hour. Okay. You it's just got lean power. and it's got power. It's not from the get go. The first few revolutions of the wheel. It's got a slight delay. Whether or not they'll improve on that with the firmware updates, we'll have to wait and see. But it's it's a minor gripe. It's once that wheel starts turning and you pick up speed, it just ups its tempo, it wants to keep rolling. Okay. It just goes and goes and goes. If there's any limitations, it's not with the wheel, it's with you. Right, okay. Um, yeah, there would be with me. Um, so I know we didn't do a conventional range test, but no, you did no. do a couple of runs yeah. and got some readouts from that. So can you just give yeah. us an idea of how far you went and how much battery was left yeah. from that type of riding? I, was, I think I've done about a 30 mile circuit. Okay. It wasn't really extreme as in big drops and you know downhill trail riding. It's single trail yeah. with some ruts, some chalk on the rolling south down hills. Okay, what sort of pace were you going at that? What was the uh, speed? Um, same you again, 15 to 30 plus. Okay, so you weren't just taking it really easy? No, not, no not at all, no. Right, and how no. many miles did you use? You got 30 miles and how much battery was left? I come that? back with 53%. Okay, so, but, oh right, okay. That's but, pretty good. But you know, I'm just shy of the 70 kilos. Yeah, so but, heavier riders will make a difference there. For sure. And also with the big powerful motor, if you are to really start pushing yeah. on the wheel and demanding a lot of power from it, it is yeah. going to zap Of course a lot it will, like, any, like anything. Yeah. Like anything. For me, at 34, 35 kilos on a 30 mile circuit. What, the wheel 34, 35 kilos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus, yeah, yeah I was yeah. going to say, was yeah. that small? That's all right. Yeah. I, look, I do look it, I don't know. <laughs> 
Um, I think riding this on a 30, 40 mile circuit, it's, no you're going to be tired before this wheel is. I mean, if you're riding more than 30, 40 miles and you still want more from this wheel, then the train's just not rough enough. So, as I'm concerned. <laughs> so is it's, that what you think the wheel's for? Did you, is that what you got the feeling it was for? If you for want to just for? go and cruise with this, you can cruise, yeah. you know? Yeah. So you can um, lock the suspension out, go on hard ground and just... You can wind in the preload and it's almost yeah. like it's locked out. Okay. Um, but that's not but what you're about, is it? It's not really, no. Not what you wanted the wheel for? No, that's right. Okay. It's, um, downhill trail riding, that's it for me. So you, you, this wheel will go places mountain bikes can't go, is what you yeah, sort of Yeah, top, top guys, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I but think then you can the get limitation back up the hill really easier really... as well. Yeah. Um, so if there are any negatives, um, talk a little bit about those. Okay, well, as for the whole wheel, the dimensions, the radius of the tyre, everything, it's so beautifully in scale. Yeah. The power pads, they're really comfortable. They work and they look fantastic. They're more of a universal fit. They've okay. got this triangle wedge pattern. Yeah. So they're really progressive and they're good, really good free ride power pad and they're universal, so they yeah. will fit most people. Yeah. They start to reach the limitations when you're really starting to push uphill fast or you're on a really rough terrain. The Achilles block, it's it's not aggressive. None of the, okay. none of the shapes are aggressive. The volume's a little bit low. Okay. And the density's a little bit soft. But these are minor gripes. Yeah. So yeah. for people, right, you, what you're saying is people are riding right at the pinnacle of what yeah. the wheel can do. 9% of the time, 9% yeah. of the riders, yeah. this is perfect. But you may need some kind of custom design to get you to the yeah, absolute I, I, limit of I the wheel. I think most guys that are riding at the top end want their own custom setup yeah. anyway. Okay. Um, so for the majority of people, this is perfect. This is going to yeah. work fine. The, okay. the, the foot plates, they're yeah. really huge, but because you have the great ground clearance, yeah. you don't have a problem with pedal strikes. Yeah. I had two in all my riding. Just two pedal strikes. Two pedal strikes yeah, in really deep ruts, yeah. and you're going to get that on any wheel. Yeah. The studs, even though they're cast into the actual foot plate, they are a little polished, so when it's wet and it's muddy, you get a little bit of slip. Right. So you lose a little bit of that bite, but I'm talking when your boots are really covered in mud. Yeah. It's really, really so wet. So how could that be I'm improved? I'm being really, really fussy how, here. How could that be improved? Me personally, I would draw these out and put grub screws in. Okay, what, so you can adjust them up and down? Yeah, and grub screws are really coarse on the thread. These don't have a thread, they're just polished. Right, okay. They're rounded off. Yeah. But I'm being really, really fussy You're picking, here. Aren't you? Yeah, You're I really am. Um, okay. Anything else? Anything else? Just to... everyone knows about the handle. It's been well documented. Yeah, it's they're got upgrading a 25 that kg now, yeah. impact load on there. It's gone up yeah. to 95. Okay. But do bear in mind if you make this too solid, it's a crumple zone. Yeah. If the if this doesn't take the impact, yeah. the chassis is going to take the impact. Well. Yeah. So something has to give. Okay. The lights are exposed. Yes, they get dirty. They're not so easy to clean, but. If you buy this wheel, you don't buy it for the handles and yeah. all the bells you and want the whistles. It's the maybe. bare bones, it's the chassis, the huge motor, the massive fast rolling tyre and the power. I was going to say, what are the pros of it then? But you sort of started going through those already, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, in the time I've had with it, it's really, really impressed me. And from my first impressions, when I looked at it, looked at the specs. Yeah. You, know, thinking, you were hopeful, weren't you? you were I hopeful. was hopeful. Did it, live did, up, did it live up to your expectation? Above and beyond. I okay. did have my concerns. You know, I'm thinking yeah. a really huge suspension. It's going to be yeah. a one-trick pony, yeah. like many downhill mountain bikes. Yeah. But it has so many other areas which it can explore. It's it, There's not much it can't do. It okay. really is down to you. So Kingston have done well with this. They've with this. blown my mind with what they've done with this <laughs> wheel. Because, yeah, I think they've been so bold with this design. And to bring it out early... They have. You, they've let people test it, haven't they? They before have. Before they've, yeah. you know... Yeah, it's really bold and really brave of them. Good on them for that. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah. anything else you found out about the wheel since, since riding it? Um, so, a really good thing, if you come from mountain biking or motocross or trail biking, Especially here in the UK where it gets really bogged down and muddy. Yeah. We don't have good mud here. It's really <laughs> sticky. Or like clay type. Clay type. Yeah, yeah. So w even though we've got great clearance all round, the mud's got to go somewhere. It's going to flick up. It's going to collect. Yeah. And there's certain areas. and it's So if you're into motorbiking and mountain biking, you get a stick. Yeah. You dig it out from time yeah. to time and off you go. Or you feeling, find a yeah. puddle and you wash it through. Yeah. Um, there was a bit of exposure of mud underneath the... Um, charge ports and right. the switch, it's only minimal. There was mud around the rear of the mud guard and around the rear bracket to the stand, yeah. but it just pushes it through. It doesn't, 
It doesn't cause any problems. There weren't problems when you were running. No, that's good to no, know. no. Um, there and there also, there was something about the suspension height, was there, that you were... Something really, really great about this design. Even though it's really tall, you have physical adjustments on the rear blocks, on the rear triangle, on the rocker arm. Right, you've lost you can, me with terminology, Roger. On the rear end, yeah. there is a rocker arm triangle. Okay which pivots back and forwards with the suspension. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Where the whole system can be raised up and down. Right. And it adjusts the height of the wheel. Oh, so is that, wheel. does that mean the height of where your foot pads are on the, the wheel? The foot pedal obviously changes higher yeah. and lower. The oh, center okay. of gravity becomes much lower or much higher. It okay. can be really jacked up or low down. So let's say if you were going to be riding on much harder ground, cruising around, you might want that lower, lower center if of gravity. If you want to do road racing and um, single trail. Not that we not endorse road rusty. racing. No, no, not road. Yeah. On public Track road. racing, should we yeah. say. You know, on tarmac. If you want to be doing this fast tarmac and or um, yeah. just smooth terrain, you can drop it down. Be changes really stable, the feel. It changes the whole thing. It's super, super stable. It's so tall and so wide. Yeah. And with that weight, rather than trying to fight against the weight and then trying to filter out that weight, they've yeah. used it to their advantage. You've got a wide stance, you've got a lot of weight under that tyre, and yeah. it's got the power. So it's really aggressive riding style. It's just so planted and so confidence inspiring. I'm quite sure that most people who are going to ride this wheel are going to be 20-30% better within the first few hours. What of their norm? Of Whatever their norm. they stand about now, yeah. it's going to go up. Oh, you think it will improve people's riding? With, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Well, you don't get much more endorsement than that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'd like to say thank you for Roger. Obviously, he's our tech and team rider as well. But um, I know you went out in some really pretty dangerous conditions, to be yeah, honest. I'm still questioning myself whether that was a good <laughs> idea or not. You know. So but... thanks for that. Um, and obviously, thanks to Luke as well for going out there with him and, and doing the filming because, uh, yeah, that can't have been fun. But brilliant endorsement for the wheel. Uh, you've heard about the pros, you've heard about the cons. If you want to come down and try it out, there's a demo here at Ride and Glide. If you want any more info, go to www.rideandglide.co.uk. If you want to speak to any of us, give us a call, give us a live chat, get us on email. You can even call up and talk to a technician if you want, even Roger himself. We'll talk no to problem. you about the wheel. He sounds like he can do that for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> so, um, true. Once again, hope it's helpful. Thank you for watching, um, and we'll see you next time. If you like the video, please like and subscribe down below. <laughs>